We're going to talk about FACT's Pump Panel Simulator. This unit is a life-size replica of a pump panel that uses a combination of real components and virtual panels. Its internal simulations are all software driven, providing a highly accurate model of the uh, internal workings and hydrodynamics of the system. Hence, no pumps, no valves, no water is needed for this uh, unit. Hi, Bill. Thanks for having me. I've been in the fire service now for 25 years. I currently serve as the training officer for the City of Novi Fire Department. I also get the opportunity to work as a subject matter specialist for FAC Incorporated. So I get to go around the country and teach the pump op simulator to other departments, which gives me the benefit because I get to learn how other departments are utilizing their training programs and how they can integrate uh, simulation training into their core curriculum as well. So what's your experience with both conventional training and virtual training? In my experience, even uh, today or even years ago when I started in the fire service, we did some form of simulation training. However, with the technology advancements throughout the years, simulation training has by far advanced to a point where it's a uh, almost an imperative thing for the fire service to accept and adopt into their agencies. In the academies, we always have some type of simulation. That simulation is generally, we take a student, we put them in a smoke-filled room. We don't have the ability to really put real smoke in there, so we either put simulated smoke, we cover up their mask, and we create a simulated environment for them. With the high fidelity simulators such as the FACT Pump Ops, we can actually take those students, put them into a real environment, and then we can create real failures and stuff that we can't do on a real apparatus uh, because of either damage to the apparatus or, of course, a possible injury to the participants. Yeah. People have this impression that simulation training is just for rookies, uh, new to pump panel operations. Um, do you feel that's the case? I don't believe anything could be farther from the truth. I think simulation training does have its bearings for the new trainees that are coming through the academies and into different areas of the fire service. However, I believe continuing education for current firefighters, current POP operators, all can benef benefit uh, greatly from simulation training. The reason why I believe that is once again, I think the new trainees, when we bring them in, if we have the benefit or the opportunity to use simulation training, we can put them through those environments, create those mistakes. The uh, continuing education for current firefighters, such as a pump operator or engineer position, I think we can benefit the fire service or those agencies by having the high fidelity simulation because a lot of those departments, they might not have the same opportunities to do continuing education there might not be enough staffing during the day for those uh, trucks to be taken out of service. They might not have the apparatus to strip all the lines off and flow large uh, gallons per minute on uh, training grounds. So we can take those students and we can still have continued education, we can still advance their education. Not to mention, I don't think every pump operator has seen every fault that might come their way. So we can still take those seasoned veterans in pump ops and we can create stumbling blocks for them to learn from so they can all still benefit from the simulation training. So Phil, how does a, a simulator like pump operations fit into an existing training program, do you think? Yeah, there's quite a few different ways that the simulation training and the pump op simulator can fit into an existing program. And that's all dependent on which type of uh, program we're looking at. If we're looking at an initial training for pump op students, I think it's an um, important aspect that we can add right at the very beginning. So we can get them some experience on the simulator before we get them out there on a real traditional uh, uh, pumper or apparatus. The one um, challenge is that we need to be able to uh, make it as integrated as possible. So what I mean by that is that we have to be able to still teach them on the simulator and then transition that right all the way over to the actual apparatus. And I believe there's a smooth transition for them to be able to go through the system and operations and then have that transition over to the real apparatus. We still have to have the hands-on training with the real apparatus 
the simulation training doesn't cut that out 100%, but we can allow them to make the mistakes and not damage the equipment. We can get the training done much more efficiently in the classroom than out on in the field ground where we have a large uh, outdoor environment, we have weather that can hamper it, we have a lot of other things that can slow down the process of training students outdoors. But if we can have them in the classroom with the pump up simulator, we can get that training and then, like I said, transition it to the to the field outside and put the uh, rubber to the road essentially. And then for an existing program what we can do, we can take that current program that we have and we can start integrating and testing and doing more of a competency based testing on those students. We can put them into environments that they might not have been in before and then see how they respond and then we can give them that experience because realistically in the fire service all of our decision making is based on past experiences for the most part. So what we learn in the classroom and what we experience is how we're going to respond in the field. So we can create those experiences and those learning experiences for the student, even the senior or veteran firefighter, and then that will transition to better outcomes in the community and of course uh, a better operations overall. So, so you, you could probably spend less time uh, on lecture and, and allow the students to move into hands-on much quicker. Uh, do, do you see this having to extend the amount of training hours that uh, that's required or do you see the pump panel just being able to replace the, uh, the, the chalk and talk part? Yeah, definitely. I see it in a few different aspects of that. I see what happening right now, most of our pump ops training when we get out there in the field, we have to strip the lines off the truck and then there's a cleanup afterwards. So maybe for a two minute pump sim uh, scenario, we might have another 20 minutes of cleanup and reset setting up the lines. So we can save all that wasted time and we can put them right in the situation and not have to go through the cleanup and everything else. So maybe that is one of the selling points as well. The other firefighters aren't gonna have to worry about staffing hand lines, cleaning up lines afterwards. We can just get right to the point of teaching what we need to teach without all the additional, I'm not saying there's a not a, um, a purpose or a point for repacking lines and uh, going through that whole process, but uh, with today's yeah. staffing levels that a lot of departments are facing around the country, we can get it done much more efficiently by just getting right to the point and getting to the point of uh, uh, training and then getting the students back in service in a lot of cases. Yeah. And, and I'm sure it must save a lot of time transitioning from one student to another student because with the pump panel you can literally just reset it and have the, the next student uh, uh, take over essentially exactly. from, from scratch again. I'm sure that's not uh, as easily done uh, out in the field. Just looking at some of the features of, of the pump pops uh, panel, uh, what would you say some of the features uh, that are available in the pump pops that you wouldn't find in the in the on the on the training ground? Um, you know, it's uh, there's definitely a, a an interest in us looking at it f from a certification level. Is is that something you think? Uh, is, is, is in there that can uh, certainly take a, uh, a student through that level of, of uh, training. I can actually see a couple different layers that uh, your or agency would be able to kind of implement it into. One of them definitely would be, besides the training, would be the testing level. So you, if you're performing some type of testing for firefighters or candidates for pump operator engineer positions, you want the ability to recreate the same type of situation form. The same could be said for a uh, testing. So if you had a, um, a, a testing for that position, not just for the certification, but for the uh, specific position, you can recreate the same positions. I know of several departments I've spoken with that have a um, physical uh, a component where they have to go through and do a series of events on a real apparatus. The challenge comes in is when a different candidate gets a different apparatus that has more problems with it because not all apparatus are the same within most fire departments. You might have some that have some damage to them, don't function properly, so now you're setting different expectations for different candidates. With the pump op simulator you could put each of the candidates in the exact same situation and recreate it to be exactly the same so you would have a valid testing process for that promotional process.
Well, obviously, um, one of the advantages of simulation training are cost savings, one would, uh, one would hope. You know, bar the obvious cost savings uh, um, that one, one can, can think of immediately, like uh, not destroying a pump um, and, uh, you know, just uh, personnel out there. What other aspects of the, the pump pop sim simulator do you feel really do benefit a training program from a cost point of view? Well, you bring up a great point as far as pump damage. For the excessive wear and tear on the pump, depending on how many personnel a department or agency may be putting through a pump training course, we can put thousands of hours on a pump. So that does an excessive amount of wear and tear. So we have regular maintenance costs that can be reduced. We have the cost, it could be thousands of dollars to repair a damaged pump. In addition to just that, we have uh, currently right now in the state of the pandemic, we have COVID safety. So we have the ability to work with less personnel on scene of training, which is good. We could have one instructor and one student all socially distanced without having to have excessive amounts of firefighters on scene for that training. So just the safety aspect right now is beneficial. In addition to that, we have liability issues and injuries. So firefighter injuries are a real thing for us to be concerned with. So when we go out onto the training ground, once again, I'm not saying we can get away from doing real hands-on training, but when we regularly take uh, and we stretch thousand feet of large diameter hose, a uh, few hundred feet of two and a half inch line, that creates a potential for those sprain strain injuries on the training grounds which are of course then a workers comp issue for um, agencies to to face and uh, deal with as well in addition to that there's a lot of other costs as far as um, the amount of staffing or personnel you need on the training ground the simulation gives us the ability to never have to worry about training cancel or train canceling training due to weather conditions due to low staffing because we really only need an instructor and the trainee at those times and we don't need them for a long period of time we can get to the point we can teach exactly the objectives we set for that training event and then we're done with that training we don't have to spend two hours doing something if we've met those objectives and then another area that I think of concern in a lot of areas around the country is water restrictions uh, over the past few years we've seen many areas that have had drought like conditions and have water restrictions so that water still even in uh, areas that have a um, pretty vast water source do have a realistic cost that comes associated with that water usage so all those components really drive us to having a uh, safety net financially by using simulation as opposed to all hands-on training on the with the real apparatus yeah, the average cost of a, of, a, of a panel being around about seventy thousand dollars. I'm sure that that can be recovered very quickly, or uh, money right. could be lost very quickly uh, if one has to uh, repair a, a, a pump. That could be saved just with a couple injuries or a couple fire pumps. Yeah, yeah. So um, you, you mentioned that uh, you know having to have an instructor and uh, in, involved, and we know that a lot of the simulations we use are instructor led. Do you see the uh, possibilities with it to to maybe down uh, reducing the capability and maybe make it more student led, so that maybe the students can go in and and learn on their own before they then move up to uh, m more uh, complex simulations. I definitely see an opportunity for that. For the simple fact is there's a lot of things a student can do such as friction loss scenarios, even some scenarios uh, they can do somewhat autonomously by being able to log into the system and go through the process with it. Uh, I, I think it's a great opportunity and I'm hoping that we're able to uh, accomplish that in the future. Yeah, great. Well, I appreciate your time, Phil, and uh, I look forward to uh, working with you more on the next generations of, of the product. Thank you very much. Thank you. I look forward to it and have a great day.